in the world. That does something to your stature. That does something to your reputation. And he's living to it. And it does something to your confidence. I'm telling you right now, you have confidence as being one of the best. If you think you're the best going into a fight, you're not, there's not going to be a box fight that you won't take, just like the other new generation. And guess what, Monster? You gave some great names, I'm, and I respect the hell out of the names you gave. I'm going to throw Jelty and Elige right in there, and i got to give some love Absolutely. to Mexican Fortnite, man. Did, did we have any or how many Mexican players do we have at the World Cup? I don't remember a whole lot of them. I know we had an Argentinian and King. We had a, a variety of folks. But Mexico has really stepped up as a region, and I think that's part of the new generation for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And talking about the new generation, we got the old generation here. Thomas HG representing for Team Gamma now. New signing there, the EU-based player. And TSM's Mac, would we had that interview that last and final time we casted just recently during the yep. semis or the opens yep. day. Mac would have had some serious confidence. Look at who's contesting him. Mars OW production, please stay with Macwood if you can on this one because this is a tight drop right here. Oh, we're gonna hop <laughs> over now. Yeah, no, that's great. I think it was bad timing for sure. But I can't timing. call out production for but that Miro. one. But, so, you know, listen, this is a dream hack production, and there you go. It's gonna be Thomas Ooh. the European coming in hot with a good start. They're like, we gotta push some love on the European's name. He's holding it down, he's crushing it. And Thomas HD, I believe, coming from Denmark with the first elimination, so off to a great start. Massive elimination on Tamiro, another player who is just confident when it comes down to PvP. Really a REIT style player. Extras Vert here hanging out just nearby. Vert, I wonder is this is Vert from NA West could be maybe would be worth doing a quick little search up on that one. But AUC is yeah, here contesting him. And yeah, like Vert he is, and yep. he is, right? Yes. Yeah, yep. so I know the team extra team has as they pretty much dominated this Fort Taylor area. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's it's, it's so cool, it's so cool, but look at this. Hawk right now. Oh, he's going to go for the shotgun shot because guess what? That's all he has. I was like, what? Why is he using an AR? And I looked down at his inventory. Charge shotgun, and that's it. Oh, no. He's going to get the, the Alim, though, with 62 HP. That's a good start. Meanwhile, we got a replay. You just saw 5G Knock get locked into an early duel against Icy. Knock is another player that's coming up big, too. Recently took home some big title for himself as well. And, you know, this is this is the deal. It's the newcomers versus that old blood. Speaking about that, I see Unknown Army lighting up the feed. There's not finding class in the feed as well. So just giving you guys an indication of how the battles are all going down. Eight players have already been dropped at the start of this. And now it's Bully versus oh. Sextro here at the Steamy Stacks. This is a big fight that's about to oh go down. Oh, my gosh. Bully originally from Florida, living in Virginia now. Going up against Zexro, originally from Long Island, New York, living in Virginia right now. I wonder why. Is there, maybe there's a data center there or something? I thought okay. we were gonna see. <laughs> I thought we were gonna see an engagement. Not gonna happen here. Looks like they're gonna respect each other. Look, this is the grand finals, monster. No reason to take these 50-50 fights. You know, a, a pump headshot could go wrong, and maybe Zexro knows it's bully too, and he's like, you know what? I'm not gonna mess with that controller player. I'm good. I'm gonna avoid that one like the plague. But it really just sets the stage, it sets the setting for us to give you guys a good feel how grand these engagements can be. This is still a fight that can break out at any second. I mean, we're looking at the stacks here. The stacks are used to initiate and take high ground. And look, it looks like it's that easy. It can happen again here. Zexo's gonna go up into the building here. This is gonna give Bully an opportunity right here, right now to look up, possibly find a shot if he's out in the air. Oh, unfortunately he did not. So Zexo's gonna spot him. Bully had an opportunity right there. 23 builds to his name. And guess what? Nice little purple burst. Green pump. I like his loadout. This is a very good early game loadout. And of course, if you can get this a limb on Zextro, that puts you in an even better spot. This is dead even, too. Look at this. This is such an awkward fight, though, Monster, for this reason. In this area of Steamy Stacks, you know, you want to try and fight it. Next thing you know, you're sucked in and you're flying. It looks like Bully's going to use that as an opportunity to get high ground here, though. Yeah, but Zextro does not want to entice this battle. He does not want to entertain the battle, not at all. He's going to stay down low, try and stay inside the box. Bully doesn't want to give him the opportunity, though. I think it's just passive enough for Bully to say, all right, buddy, you want to hide? I'll fight you right here, right now. KIU, though, is nearby, so they have to be careful. This is this is a tough spot to fight, and you can see how it's going down. It's not looking good. Yeah. That's exactly right. Great shots, though. Using right-hand advantage for Bully. It's looking a little scary right now. He's going to actually not really build as well as he probably should have. Thank goodness for Shockwaves. Needs to be careful. And guess what? KIU Q is going to actually do a great job following through. And now it's Zextro still chasing. Zextro says, hey, bud, you want to try and push me? Guess what? You're going to have to finish me as Zextro is flying. But no, look at that. Bully is going to actually just turn on him. Beautiful play from Bully. And now Q is going to actually take out Bully most likely unless Bully can make some miraculous happen. 
100%. This is looking crazy right here. Close fight between the two now. Wow. And just like that, you can see how it can all engage, how quickly things can change your bully. Needed that siphon so bad. I mean, it keeps him in the Dude, game a little bit. I love what I just saw. And Bully's actually going to use that last shockwave intentionally to go to where Zextra was to get his loot because he was out of shockwaves. He was out of minis. He needed to. I am loving what I'm seeing out of Bully so far. The aggression followed by the recognition that there's a third party here. This is a fight not worth fighting. I'm going to back out and reset. And then, of course, taking advantage of the over-aggression coming through. Really, really smart. He takes out Zexro. He's still alive. We're going to keep an eye on the elimination feed to see if he continues to go here. But I'm like what I'm seeing from Bully so far. That was a great job for him. The great disengage. Great breakdown and insight there as well. Just to give us a grand idea of how it all plays out. Here's the Dirty Docs, though. This is where we saw Miro for, uh, fall, but we also saw Thomas HD take that high ground, take that zip line, and poise up here now. Here in the shots, trying to go out. It's Marzo W on the wide rotate, coming around the water. Close one, and sniper shots are also being exchanged out. Gotta be careful, or you'll lose your face here messing with Mars. Exactly right. He's so incredibly good. And, you know, look, first off, he's also fighting a shark. Second off, how could you not be good when you put as much time in as this man puts in? 100,000 plus arena points total, and that, that number must be even higher now since I last checked. It is insane how much effort and how much time he puts in. But right now, Crack is saying, eh, nah, -uh. I don't care how much time he got. I'm the better player. Ooh. He's trying to take out Mars, almost has a chance to, to catch him out of, out of the sky right there. Oh my gosh, he's literally blind firing. Give me a heart attack, Crack. Use this your is, ADS. This yeah, this is one of the scariest things you can do, though, if you're Mars, because Mars is sitting himself out in the open. Now he's in the water. No, the one tag is going to come in, takes him out. The champ is down. One of the reigning champs are now down and wiped out for game number one. We're hopping over to Stark Industries, where we have Nitro Fan versus Mackwood potentially going to unfold here. And there's Reet, too. My God, so many big names nearby. Yeah, Reet's off the cliff, though. He's, yeah, he's out of here. He's out of 3,000. Mackwood's trying to do the same thing. No, he's actually trying to run someone over. Here we go. Mackwood, who we had a chance to interview as he got top seven, I believe, in the semis. That was heat number two. He almost didn't play in heat number two because he was so distraught that he didn't make it in heat number one. Thank God he did, because guess what? He's here now. We he said, Mackwood, we haven't seen a ton of great solo performances out of you in a while. Is it going to happen this time? He said, absolutely, Fallout and Monster. And so far, he's off to, off to a good start. A good shot on Nitro. He's got to be careful, though. Nitro's got that power pump. You know what he can do with that. That's a one-tap capability here as he's looking for the box fight, potentially looking to boost in. That's what I'm talking about. It's the big shot, and it's only two of them that's going to delete him. Yes, he's going to give Mackwood the take the L there because you kind of deserve it when you push a purple pump like that, especially when you stand in front. So unfortunate. Mackwood, as great as he is of a player, one, one mistake there, Fallout, and it's over. Yeah, and I got to say, you kind of deserve it, but you don't really deserve it because you don't know that it's unfortunate <laughs> that you don't really know that that guy has a purple pump, and that's the tough part, right? You don't know your opponent's inventory. There's no visual cue that that's the case. Meanwhile, guess what? We got Jelty rocking his Dynamo skin. It's the Mexican skin that we all love. He has an opportunity to win a long-lasting skirmish against O-Rex, and you get to see how tough that really was for Jelty to earn. Guess what? He comes out on top with about 30 HP to his name. It was a great fight as well. Remember, Jelty does like to land in that retail area. I'm wondering if he is still playing that portion of the map. Maybe next game we'll get a little more insight into that drop spot. Unknown Army, someone who lands around that area as well, is rotated now south through the Caddy's Corner. So giving you an idea as well how many big names play this area. Yeah, and I'm so, and I'm so glad we get to watch Unknown Army. I'm so glad he qualified. Because he is so incredibly good. He is kind of that hybrid controller, keyboard and mouse player. Whichever side of the bed he wakes up on is how he decides to pick uh, keyboard and mouse is what I heard, actually. No, I'm just kidding. But no, big shot to <laughs> Unknown Army. As we all know how good he really, really is with really both inputs. It's impressive that this young talent had the chance to do that. For me, Monster, look, I know you play keyboard and mouse. I know you come from mobile originally, way before Fortnite. I was like, look... I'm not going to be able to make the switch. I'm too old to learn keyboard and mouse all over again. I'm going to stick with a controller. I was a I was a controller pro back in the day. I'm not going to relearn this thing. And the fact that these these young young t kids, this talent, have the time, the wherewithal, the ability to learn both inputs is insane. I could not have ever done that. 
Listen, I blame PC Skyrim that taught me mouse and keyboards. I spent <laughs> hours on that thing. WASD to run around and I'm Blame good. or think though. Blame <laughs> or think, because you're like, they got think, it. I Switch think of yeah. uh, but here though is another big engagement. Unknown army trying to fend for himself. Looks like Skittle's gonna roll right back up into the action and then back off. I wonder though. That's just enough, I was gonna say. It's just enough to ooh, unknown feeling pretty angry and into the box he goes. He's trying to find the oh. shots. But no! Skittles, what? Dude, that is tragic. And I have to say something. This is going to be a bold statement. This is going to be a hot take, Monster. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. I don't know how excited I was and how crazy I am. And I told you last time my favorite weapon. Do you remember what I told you my favorite weapon is? Which was your favorite? The pump shotgun. Mm. But I don't know how crazy I was about it coming back to the game, coming out of the vault. Can I tell you why? Tell me. Because what we just saw right there, man, it's like... It's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. And the same thing the Mac would. I mean, obviously, it's a skillful weapon. I know it's a, that's why I said it's a, it's a bold statement. Don't yell at me, chat. We all love the pump. I'm not saying we should get rid of the pump. I'm just saying, in general, man, the fact that Macwood's out of this game, the fact that Energy Unknown is out of this game, when they really controlled those fights, they, right. I think, outplayed their opponent. But one pump to the face, you're, you're done. Which I get, that's how the pump works, but you never know if the other person you're fighting against has a pump or what rarity it is, right? It's, it's a tough situation, man. It's a tough no, one for me. Well, well, here's the thing, too, though. There's a lot of pros that share that same sentiment. Like, honestly, it's one of those things where it's like, man, that upgraded pump should not be in the game because no one should be able to bail themselves out, right? That hard. So I think it's jail free card. Like pros do, too. Yeah, you get out of jail free card. It really is. You, you get out of jail out of a bad situation with one pump to the head, you know? I agree. I agree. But here, though, Furious in a tight situation doesn't matter. He makes the charge shotgun look like a pump shotgun there with the ease. That's the difference between a pro player and someone like myself who will choke the timing on that charge. It, they, they have two different cadences, but these pros, man, they can manipulate and consistently get good. Monster, I love this. I, as I just saw, I talked about that. Look at this from Nitro's perspective, all right? So let's just continue that, that breakdown of what we were talking about. Nitro in a one versus one against Macwood. He's getting boxed. He's getting coned. He gets one pump in, one pump to the head, and he's and that's it. You know, it's uh, it's crazy how how quick. Obviously, he earned that fight. I'm not saying he didn't earn that fight. He out he outplay. I mean, he had a good a good play. You can't take that away from him. But I, I really strongly do feel like if, if Macwood, or sorry, if uh, Nitro doesn't have a pump right there, uh, especially a purple pump, that's Macwood's fight nine out of ten times. 100% the difference. The body shot alone was 100 damage. That's a shield ripper. Yeah. Showing you guys how quickly the tides can change. Now, though, on this other perspective, it's Ooh. the same deal. Furious has a blue charge. So does Nexi. And now it's charge v charge action. No, actually, I think Furious got the upgrade from that previous battle. And here it is. 132 on the Furious into the box. And it's a dirty scramble right now. Ooh. They're trying to figure it out. Nexi's going to go in and back up. Furious is going to try and run as well. He's got down to no HP now. Just about 40 or so. And oh no, making it look easy with the harpoon into the box there, Fallout. Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's why people people sleep on the harpoon in your inventory for late game. But hey, and the flip side, next is like Fallout. I respect your sentiment about this, the pump shotgun and how, how strong it is. But look what I'm about to do with the charge shotgun. He just takes out Furious, the hard to do, obviously, with a charge shotgun, despite Furious having a purple pump, if I saw that correctly. So shout out to Nexi. Sometimes the better player is just the better player. Obviously, Furious right there got third partied, but Nexi really played that incredibly well. Meanwhile, we got a replay coming up of Tabney, despite being surrounded, finding a frag before getting eliminated. It was a crazy one, as you see at the bottom left of your screen. And we're talking about being third party. This is all in that same vicinity, the Lazy Lake, as you see on the replay here, just showing you how congested it is up there. Now we're gonna draw our attention to the southern portion. This is Caddy's Corner. These are all the players. Just look at the crosshairs. All of these guys have to cross straight north through the Lazy Lake congestion and into the next safe zone. So this is gonna be a tough rotate for everyone to make. The amount of shots going down right now. It's not looking safe for anyone. Trashy's looking to try and get this dirty, sneaky pick here. He might be able to. AV's gonna walk close. Not close enough though. Harpoon once again in the inventory, in the hands of the opponent. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot more harpoon action. I don't know if my man Clay Stelling's out there just preaching, you know, <laughs> preaching on his stream, just saying, look, the harpoon's great. No, I'm just kidding. But, you know, we didn't see a whole lot of harpoon in, this, in our semis in previous weeks, but so far we've gotten, we've gotten a lot of harpoon. Obviously, it's a great weapon. It's not a great end game kit uh, in terms of the, in the grand scheme of things because, you know, rotates are so fast. You're not going to be in box fights really in late, late, late game when you're tunneling. But uh, you, you can't sleep in the harpoon, that's for sure. Monster, what are your thoughts? 
Yeah, I mean, the, the one thing I can see it being really well in endgame is just to pick up loot. Otherwise, yeah, the That's upload true. really yeah. fizzles out. It fizzles out otherwise, it's not quite the, you know, entry thing you're looking for. It's so risky in endgame. You were spot on with that one, but yeah, if you're not picking up loot with it, you're kind of losing out on the opportunity, but that's as it presents itself. Here though, Skittles getting broken into. Oh my gosh, a 200 pump. Is that gonna be the name of the game today? It was right? AB <laughs> who gets deleted out of the running. I love this though. He's camping on top of the upgrade machine. Wow, that's brilliant from Skittles. Any single poor soul who has a charged shotgun thinks that they're going to go to the same exact upgrade <laughs> machine and just casually upgrade to a pump because Fallout and Monster keep talking about how OP it is and they want to follow our lead. No, I'm just playing. And that and Skittles just going to be chilling there, getting free a limb after free a limb. We'll see if he can get another one, but that's a good first one. Hey, listen, you're not wrong, though. We are preaching, but we're preaching the truth here because the weapon yep. does put in work. And I mean, nine times out of ten, you look at these pros' inventories, that's what they are rocking. That's what you want to upgrade towards. That's exactly right. You know, and that's why you just follow follow the meta. That's what I always say. If, if you want to understand what's the best loadout, if you're a player that's like, hey, what should I be, what should I be picking up? What's the best loadout? Obviously, the top, top players know. But if you're kind of an aspiring player that's really just maybe new to competitive Fortnite, and you're like, yeah, should I go pump? Should I follow whatever the pros do? Follow the meta because it's there for a reason. That's what pros do. That's what I did when I played professionally. Me and Monster like old, old men talking about back in our day. But but that's what that, that, that's the that's reality is the pro players always set the meta. And as a pro player, you're going to find the best way to break the game. When I say break the game, I don't mean literally. You're not glitching. I mean break the game in terms of finding the best possible way to optimize your efficiency in the game loadouts a big part of that is shark man is going to find one with a gray ar he's like fallout screw your meta i'm going to roll a gray ar to the very end because that's my own meta now i'm just playing he's trying to make work of what he's got here that's a that's an important frag but what sucks is that he's not able to capitalize on the loot now only 20 Harpoon. reloads inside the inventory 100 percent skittles though does manage to upgrade that shotgun to one more level now the legendary variant and that's what happens when you bop someone like ab on top of the upgrade machine he's got all that extra to work with he's struggling there on the yeah. hp pocket though oh he's gonna get to the campfire nicely done for skittles dude skittles is just the positioning king right now skittles is the geographic king he's just perfectly positioning himself in terms of map position we don't talk about that often, you know, as casters, monster, and, and in Fortnite, we always talk about rotations. We talk about, you know, the, the the grand scope of the macro. We never really talk about the micro, which is players in intentionally positioning themselves around chests, around up, weapon upgrades, around campfires, and being able to use things and really use the map or the environment to their advantage, much like you see in games like StarCraft and elsewhere, where it's all about the micro. Meanwhile, oh, Chelsea no. takes one to the face. Was that a headshot from Big Wig? Yes, it was. From wow. downtown as well, so far off in the distance, he's gonna find a big sniper shot. Deletes Jelsey right before that. Two Skittles found a couple frags as well. What a turn of events! Here. Right, he's popping off Skittles. He was he was not in a good place. He was in borderline shambles with that campfire, and now he's still getting some limbs. I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of Skittles for so far, Monster. I don't know about you. Yeah, definitely big deal coming in here. Five G's notch though. Two eliminations, one of which we saw in the early game onto class following up in that replay mode this is 5g nosh the player who came first after three games of pretty much zero points he had a phenomenal final three game stretch i did a review onto him on my channel just showing you that this is someone to look out for someone who can have the mental fortitude in the solo setting to come back against all odds those are the kind of players that are the dangerous ones and notch is easily solidified himself with the best of the best by doing that yeah, I could not agree more with that. But right now, though, Monster, you know, that, that's the overall. But the here and now, I'm not liking his loadout too much. I mean, the only reason I say that, you know, because we keep talking about the importance of a pump. Blue charge shotgun, he's going to want to upgrade that. But overall, his loadout is great. I'm just, you know, I'm really dissecting that one thing based on what we've been talking about. Meanwhile, we got Commandment, we got Shark Man both taking out one, top left of your screen. I'd like to see him find a frag. I'd like to see him upgrade that pump. But outside of that, Slopper meta is still strong. One shockwave is going to help with rotations and, of course, some shield as well. It's a solid loadout. I want to see him take out Dejan right here. This is a good opportunity. Yeah, definitely tough. He's on the road state trying to use Dejan as a distraction factor in front of him. The zone of safety is right in front of him. He's going to find it now based up right on top, giving himself some key location and positioning to find the frag. And as I'm setting up the commentary for it, 
he gets it before I can get the words out of my mouth. Well played for Notch, and that's going to be his third elimination now. Here's Big Rig, someone who's got a very makeshift loadout. That harpoon, though, can be the key factor for him. And the sniper might be as well. No, he's going to miss it on the Eclipse though. Yeah, that's exactly right. And hey, you know, he took out Jelty. Jelty fans worldwide are crying right now, but if I'm the always the fellow of the camp monster, I don't know about you. This is like how I operate with my sports teams in the playoffs. I'm like, if my team, if my team's gonna lose, the Chicago Blackhawks or whatever, if they're gonna lose, I want the guy, the team that took us out to win the whole thing. So on that logic, Jelty fans, Big Wig, you should be cheering for Big Wig because it makes Jelty look better to get taken out by, by Big Wig and he ends up winning the whole thing because it says that Big Wig is the best player in this lobby right now. Meanwhile, Vanish Bully's gonna get taken out in Narwhal right after. I'm not sure if you agree with that sentiment though, Monster. I mean, yeah, it, it's true, right? We're talking about just trading spades here. If, if you're at the top and you get taken out, I mean, it raises your stock. You have to put some kind of big pressure on it. Those Skittles in the zone eating a bunch of it. I forgot to mention, Notch is actually playing from West as well. So just something to keep in mind as we were hyping him up. He's also playing against the ping here. Big names I'm seeing alive though. Who Fishy, XS Sharp, Commodon, Coop. This is a major game. Paper still alive. Shark, Kanata, Reet, Trashy, Slacks, Joji, Zuki Jeez. here, Vic, Skittles. Just wow. wow. Gonzo for the Bronx. Oh my gosh, so many big names. Dude, it is it is as stacked as it gets in this lobby. We talked about it in the pre-show. I don't know if I've ever seen a more stacked DreamHack Finals. I don't know about you. Obviously, Europe gets a little crazy. We don't get a lot of American representation in Europe. We don't get a lot of European representation here, though. Outside of Thomas HD, I haven't seen anyone else, I don't think. So it's a, it's a different world here. Aww. We got Shark, we got Shark, and we got a few others. As we see Skittles right now in a 1v1, he takes out one. Sorry, I missed that, actually. I was looking at the left side of my screen, not the right. Skittles now has four. And that was the big rig, so getting a little bit of revenge there for the Mexican Jelty. fans out there who are exactly rooting for Jelty. Skittles, look at him, playing aggressive in the endgame, trying to box, dive into players. And you can tell they're afraid, they're backing up, they're giving him the respect and the space as he pushes them off layer after layer. Skittles, though, is the man of the hour right now that we're keeping a close, close eye out. On height, the Ooh. Nitro fan was putting big pressure down, and here's Reed in the low ground looking for some major frags. Skittles is tacked up. He was on about 10 HP. So we're going to look at the the, the limb feed at the top left very closely as we saw Coop get taken out. We got Reet right now, arguably one of the best players in Fortnite as it currently stands. That crash pad's too strong as he can't get the first shot that he wanted. But his inventory is not looking great. The pump and the, the AR are obviously good, but he could use two more slots of shield or something of the like. Ooh. 160 to the face. Quick edit. Reet had the wall. Knew he had the wall and perfectly played his right hand right there. Oh turns my around gosh. And gets another one. Reet, you are a savage. The follow-up, the back-to-back, -back, the big pump shots, the get out of jail free card. Reet's got it all and he's singing with it here in the final moments. Four eliminations now. The major impact if I've ever seen it. Gives him all of the loot here to now elevate himself. He's playing from mid-ground, possibly even high ground. This could very well be his game. I think once you let him go, he just does not stop. And he's on a tear now. We're going to continue it here. Who he's going to find who fishy as well. Big names on the resume. That's insane. He is literally taking out Titan after Titan. Like David fighting Goliath right now. But guess what? It's Goliath fighting a bunch of Davids. As we know, Reet is one of the best to do it. He's doing such a good job. And I want to point out, too, he was actually an inch away from getting eliminated in that house. Someone was hiding in that house right below him. But his edits were so fast and he was so quick. He's going to find another one. No, this is the shot. That's uncharacteristic. But Reet's been playing so well. Definitely playing well here. Looking to find another frag. He's just changes layers. He's just trying to stay alive, get this placement point, sneak away towards the end because he knows if he can continue to dominate the layers, he'll walk his way to another victory royale. This is it. Game number one. This is game number one, and Reed already has six eliminations under the belt. Will Reed's fall here? Or will he find a major one? Nitro, though, is the guy on high ground. Five Elans as well, looking to put some pressure onto the lobby. The more Nitro does, the more likely it is they're going to come down to Reet's world. And now, Reet's in the box fight in the store. Will he find this one, Fallout? I don't know. Uh, I He's so. missing. And oh, it's just enough to stay alive. Wait, did someone else get taken? Did the storm take him out? I don't even see what happened there. Did the person edit and run their run away? Either way, they helped out Reet because Reet's getting more and more placement points. He's getting an elimination. He needed that siphon. Reet is looking so good right now. Some way, somehow alive. Not done yet. He's gonna find himself. I think it's Kanata right in front of him. So here's the challenge. He finally gets taken out by one, and it's Nitro Fan in the end who does it. 
We were all aboard the Reet train, but all along it was Nitro who was the conductor. He comes out on top of the Wind Monster. There were seven players alive in those final moments. Nitro walks away with 10 eliminations, five of those falling to him, just showing you how dominant he can be in those final moments. What in the world?